Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news, this time for the week ending the 14th of May. We take all the official sources we can find from Star Citizen's infos and crunch it down in our reclaimer into a compressed block of usable materials. Links to everything we discuss, including the latest newsletter, in the description below. Project Eclipse, CIG have been teasing the Aegis Eclipse concept recently, and it's been confirmed as the next concept sale starting from the 19th of May. That's next Friday. It will be $275, which is a hefty some, but it's likely to have cheaper Warbond versions as well. The teasers that we've seen for it suggest that it is a military ship in law used for black ops and top secret stuff. In the sneaky peeky, uh, the words UEE Navy Space Superiority are used. It could still be a mixture of a lot of things though. It could be a fighter, a bomber, electronic warfare, stealth, um, uh, quantum interdiction, um, heavy, light, or a mixture of all of those or some of those. When I hear space superiority though, I think single seater, top tier, anti dogfighter, fighter. So literally, claiming space around you by going, I am the best at fighting here. Uh, this should be the last military ship that we see for a while, with most of the other concepts this year focusing on non-combat roles. CCU, so the Cross Chassis Upgrade System, otherwise known as the Upgrade System, um, is now having a base price of $5. So let me explain what's going on there. Currently, for example, if I was to upgrade a Gladius to a Hull B, both of which $90 ships, it would cost me zero to create a Cross Chassis Upgrade on the Ship Upgrades page. If, however, in the future, from Friday onwards, I want to get a $0 upgrade, it would actually cost me $5. They're also increasing that across the board. The idea here is that they don't want people to keep on switching ships. There are apparently 1.1 million unused CCUs in their system, and this will help lighten the load and prevent exportation in the future. The value of the ship that you apply the upgrade to is also increasing by that $5, so if you melt it later, you're not losing any credit. I think buybacks with CCUs will also have that additional $5 added to them in the future as well. So if you're purchasing them back with a buyback system, if you want any more details, I have linked them below blow. Um, I think this might actually affect the grey market quite heavily. The change will start from Friday the 19th of May, so stock up on CCUs now to avoid disappointment. The 3.0 schedule report update. So the schedule report has had a couple of changes. Uh, a few features have been pushed back um, by a week or two, and this shouldn't actually affect the, uh, the release window, but something that might affect the release window is the Delamar and Levski landing zone are taking a bit longer than expected. They want to have it in 3.0 if possible, and this could potentially change the live release date window. The feature is estimated to be completed by the 30th of June currently, so hopefully they'll get it done a bit quicker than that. If they don't, then they'll be able to still put it in the live release possibly. The ship selector app and insurance claims are being merged together, and a few uh, bits and bobs got completed, and a couple of things actually got pushed back by a week or two. But other than that, there are no major changes that would further affect uh, and delay the PTU and live targets currently. The Evocati PTU release is still currently targeted as early as the 5th of June, with a live release again still targeted between the 29th of June and the 12th of July. And hopefully it will stay around that. But I will bring you up um, to, to scratch every week on every Friday that schedule report is updated. And you can find it at robertsspaceindustries.com forward slash schedule schedule dash report. New sub flare, a new holographic table and model, the Icarus 1 um, station, which is an in-law station from quite a, quite a while ago in-law. Um, if you are an RSI subscriber, it will be on your account now. If you subbed over the weekend, it will turn up on Monday. And um, this is like a cool little holographic table. I actually quite like the sub flare. Um, patcher update 2.5.1. So a new patcher um, or update to a patch has been released. It will auto-update when you log in. Um, it's not the Delta patcher, unfortunately, but it does add an alternative HTTP download method via the options menu, allowing for players with download issues to hopefully be able to download the game. There are various optimizations to the patcher, and it also features additional music for those of you so inclined. This week's ATV was UK studio focused and therefore awesome. The gameplay guys there have been working on the player interaction system and in a thought system and have been fleshing that out with a lot more functionality and getting it feeling more ergonomic. There was a featurette later on in the show as well, which we will talk about. Air traffic controller system is also being worked on. This manages takeoff landings at locations and reserves landing pads, frees them up and spawns ships. They've been finishing off the character status system, including breathing and suit punches. They've been working on pick up and carry um, to 
further combine it with player interaction and usable items as well. They've created NPC conversation tools, allowing the creation of NPC conversations more easily. The audio guys have been working on procedural planet audio processors, as well as breathing for character status, and a new dialogue tool called Word Up. They've been getting more polish and um, content into the dynamic cinematic ambient music system too, which ramps up the, the sound and the, the way that's going on based on what, what you're doing. So the more you get shot, the more it will change the way it styles its music. The more you hit something or kill enemies, the more it ramps up to make you feel heroic, whatever. It's pretty cool. Um, the graphics guys there, they've been um, integrating Lumberyard's real-time volumetric fog into the game, which is going to be a huge boost for lighting. Um, they've been getting rendered texture work, allowing currently 2D displays to be kind of shown. It's So they're going to eventually allow for 3D holographic projections using this deck. This is an amazing feature which could allow for some truly awesome gameplay. It basically allows in-game cameras to capture and display footage elsewhere. That is the basics of rendered texture. So it can save a load of disk space rather than having all these videos pre-made like pre -made and pre-rendered on your um, desktop, on your hard drive. But um, it can also allow for great gameplay, literally someone recording a race uh, and having it streamed to a TV or have the camera that they show here of the guy. I think it's pretty cool. It might even work for third person cameras um, or at least give them a reason to have them. Uh, their environment probe tech is nearing completion, allowing fully dynamic bounce lights and reflections on planets. Atmospheric flight and engine trails have also been getting finished up. They're looking at some awesome lightning effects to kind of mimic realistic lightning and electricity. They've completed the first pass on the Misc Prospector damage states, making it blow up. Uh, weapons have continued to be worked on, such as the Scourge Railgun, including its charge and um, charged effects. The uh, completed the Preacher Armament Distortion Scattergun and the Apocalypse Arms Scattershot, uh, as well as completing or doing further work on the Klaus and Warner LMG. Uh, Ship-wise, the Origin 600 concept is in its final stages and should be the next concept ship after the Aegis Eclipse. The Reclaimer has been making progress. The exterior, the claw, as well as the internal habitation, tech and salvage room or decks have been completed. They've created derelict ships by breaking ships up like the Connie, Freelancer, Caterpillar and Starfarer for missions for 3.0 and wreck sites and loot sites and that sort of stuff. The Razor Harley's completed complete uh, and it's uh well it's damage states and lod passes are now in progress anyway the hull c um hull mesh is now largely complete as well uh, the ship is making progress um environment guys they've been continuing um exploring ways to create volumetric forms in space service outposts are finishing their interior the uh, visual benchmarks for engineering habitation hydroponics modules. These also include various set dressings, which they're working on too. Um, truck stops and space stations are in the final art phase as they continue to refine build sets and explore more potential build configurations for them. Animation guys, they've been working on um, AI, um, getting them to uh, cover and animation assets beyond a functional state. They've been getting breathing animation improvements done, uh, implementing multi-directional takedowns where you can kill enemies in close proximity with like a, a stab or a pistol whip. Um, they've made improvements to weapon reloads for FPS weapons as well, and those melee, in, well, melee improvements for pistol stock weapons and that sort of stuff. whoop With the pistol whips. Um, all look like they're pretty cool. Uh, they also, down in the Derby studio, or Derby studio, uh, working on animations for 3.0 mission givers. Uh, they've delivered 500 facial animation files for Squadron 42. I'm not sure how to quantify that other than with the time, the, the number 500. They tracked around a thousand body animations for the Persistent Universe. Lots of body animations. And they've made new, improved facial animations for firing weapons using Steve Bender's <laughs> grimacing face. Um, features are on the player interaction system. So there was a little featurette using the inner thought and interaction system for players interacting with cops bits and objects. Basically, we're going to have a pretty in-depth functionality to the system, and we can like bring up this menu to do various different things, um, and it will be contextual based on the items that we're looking at or manipulating in our hands as well. Um, we can use hotkeys or press buttons and switches using the mouse when the system is turned on. Objects can be picked up, manipulated, thrown, have uh, other contextual functions like removing batteries, opening and closing, unlocking or forcing open drawers, for example. There are a lot of deeper uses for the system. If you want... Um, and it's very like intuitive is the idea and, and fl 
free flowing. Uh, I'll get a video up of the object interaction and customization shortly to explain it in a bit more detail. The monthly report is also out dealing with what's happened over the last four weeks across the studios in some detail, but it is pretty much a roundup of the news um, over the last few weeks. Um, I'll get a video up of that early next week, and links to that and everything else we have discussed down below. And that's basically it for this week's news. Every month we give away a ship. For May, it's an Avenger Titan. All you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channels uh, and comment on one of my Star Citizen videos during that month. What do you think the Ages Eclipse is going to be with that hefty price tag of $275? Uh, are you annoyed about that CCU system? having a $5 kind of base price and effectively additional price on all CCU upgrades. Uh, or don't you care because you know you can just melt down your ship uh, and then purchase the ship that you want because you don't actually lose any money from doing that. Though you might lose um, lifetime insurance, for example, if you had lifetime insurance and wanted to change ship to a ship that didn't have lifetime insurance later. I don't know. But yeah, do you have any questions for me or about Star Citizen as well? A special thanks to my Patreons who help allow me to create the amount of content I do. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon, check the link out below. Um, and yeah, everything else we talked about is also there. Thank you so much, guys. Like, genuinely, you guys are amazing. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And I'll see you in the verse.